I would like to also invite Sam. So I'm talking about the DIDCOM working group. Um, this is, isn't credentials related, but we don't mind uh, sitting next to our, our credential working folks. Um, and uh, and there's some there's some good collaboration there in the future. Um, so the the scope of the this working group is is to produce a, a spec um, that talks about authenticated message based communication. So um, we think when you say messaging, sometimes our brain go right to you know human based messaging, and certainly that's a possibility. But there's a lot more things that uh, that we can do. Anytime you have two parties that need to message each other about whatever, there's a handful of properties that they that they're, they're going to desire. And so establishing a standard spec for this is is uh, is really useful. And that way, the development of formats or protocols um, don't have to uh, worry about the sort of the things that they get for free um, if they use to come on top of that. So um, there's a little bit of a history of this that originated. Uh, the work originated in Hyperledger uh, Aries and IW29. That was two IWs ago. There was a whole bunch of interest, uh, lots of work that I didn't summarize, and now we have a diff working group. Uh, and then the the we're, we're we're calling V2 the 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 what we're doing now. And there's a whole lot of improvements that have come about, not just the key type material stuff, but uh, some other stuff that I'll talk about in a minute. The uh, it helps to have a UR here map. Um, and so this is, this is the UR here map for DIDCOM. Underneath it is DIDs and DID documents, which is completely out of scope of the, scope of the working group. We want to build the, the communication uh, standard on top of that. And then on top of the, uh, this work, there will be uh, lots of protocols involved. You know, you know credential exchanges mentioned, um, but, but any type of protocol you can imagine uh, that you might want to to have between two parties in a nice secure way. Um, and so uh, quite specifically, this is our area right here. It, it bleeds a little bit into here, in which case, um, you know, if you're going to design a protocol, uh, it helps, uh, you know, there's there's a couple of standard ways to, uh, and, and mechanisms you can do that, like threading, et cetera, uh, that, that are optional, but you can use those, but it doesn't get into defining protocols itself. Um, that is the that is uh, work for other areas and other, other working groups. Um, so there's some related work that's relatively important to understand this if you're going to dig into the technical details. One is, is an IETF uh, draft on JWM uh, that T Tobias here, I'll, I'll blame him for that, um, that talks about uh, this is feels like a JWT, JWE type of a thing, and that's because it is. It's designed to be a messaging uh, format in the same family. And so there's an IETF draft for that. And then also related is the ECDH1PU. Uh, uh, method for, for encryption that actually gives us, uh, in DIDCOM v1, we were doing something slightly non-standard, and this is a better standards uh, approach to do the same thing um, uh, for authenticated encryption on top of the JW uh, family of things. And so that's some important stuff if you want to, to dig in and understand the internals. Um, so the, we've had some discussion on why some of these things, um, and, and uh, the, the goal of, of DIDCOM is to provide um, a bunch of attributes to sort of come for free um, without you having to figure it out as you're developing protocols. Um, so security independent of transport is one of them. I'll talk about transports in a minute, uh, but uh, you know it's common to do HTTP and, and things like WebSockets, but being able to pass something over a Bluetooth connection is also very useful, and being able to trust the security in all of those transports is, is very useful. Um, it, it serves as a foundational layer of interoperability, uh, so that if, if you have uh, two parties that speak DIDCOM, then, then the, the amount of extra a protocol on top of that um, is, you know, you have the foundational benefit by, uh, you know, by, by doing so. Uh, another feature that we've worked hard to maintain is, is it's repudiable by default and you can't support non-repudiation. Um, this, there's a whole lot of use cases where repudiability is a very useful feature. Um, and, uh, and so we wanted to make sure that that wasn't enforced by the protocol, uh, though you can do it. Um, for for the, those obvious cases where it, it's very very helpful, uh, it fills the gap between did and protocols. You, you have a I have a did for you, and I want to engage in some way. Uh, what's the gap? And, and this is uh, this helps that. Um, and then of course it accelerates the protocol development because of the things you get for free. Uh, so uh, transports, uh, I, I brought up and I wanted to to talk about this briefly. Um, uh, so HTTP HTTPS is an obvious use case for this. Um, and, and that's a common one that we've seen uh, in version one in the Aries ecosystem uh, used heavily, as well as WebSockets. Uh, WebSockets are very uh, helpful when you have something like a phone um, that, uh, that you want to connect to something else and be able to do um, you know, more efficient transfer back and forth of messages. 
Another highly desirable one for offline use cases uh, are both Bluetooth uh, sockets, so you can connect over Bluetooth and pass stuff, um, as well as messages in, in quoted, uh, encoded in a QR code. Um, we have a fairly uh, limited uh, expected application of that. There, I don't know of anyone that's trying to uh, make phones communicate by blinking QR codes at each other, uh, but uh, it really helps in a bootstrapping use case um, when you need uh, when you need to pass some information, and we don't want to pass key material uh, or things of that nature uh, through humans because we're really bad at not typoing things. So QR codes are really helpful there. Um, and there are other web sockets that, that, that have been explored. Um, in, in version one, for example, we had one that that, that, uh, that was passed intentionally over IMAP and some, some other things like that. Um, but the idea is that the message format itself it has some applications to transport so that we can all use HTTP or web sockets the same way. There's a little bit of variability there, um, but the the, the core of of, uh, of didcom itself is uh, is not specific to a transport. So our current work um, covers a, a variety of topics: uh, routing messages and and how you get messages from one place to another place. That's particularly useful uh, in the cases where you're trying to hide your traffic uh, to obtain herd privacy. Um, or you're communicating with an endpoint that doesn't have a, a, an inbound um, uh, endpoint that we traditionally think of, like a mobile phone or, or uh, an agent that sits behind a firewall. Um, also, a did document service endpoint application, what needs to be in the did document, and then how we actually apply that to, um, to, to didcom itself and making that happen. Transport application is, is simply the, uh, you know, choosing the conventions with each transport that makes sense. When you're passing it over HTTP and the message is successfully received, what HTTP response code are you going to use, et cetera? Um, and that way, there it's just uh, how to how to map uh, did come onto that particular transport in a consistent way. And then key type support um, uh, in uh, debating the merits of including various types of keys for uh, both FIPS compliance uh, and um, and you know common types of keys used. Uh, this is. Um, uh, the goal is to support as few as possible. That way we have less work to reach a, a broad level of interoperability, but while supporting the right ones to make sure that this has applicability in all the areas that we're, we're looking for. And then uh, join us, uh, the DIDCOM, WG DIDCOM on the DIF Slack. We meet at non, uh, noon on uh, Mondays, US Pacific. And uh, we keep uh, a running agenda and, and update recordings there. They're also, uh, uh, of course, uh, posted to the general channel, but I try to grab those links and, and stick it in the doc. So if you miss a meeting or you're curious what we've been talking about, um, listening to meetings is convenient because you can play it back often faster than real time. So you can buzz through an hour-long meeting in and, and less than that, which is helpful if you're trying to stay caught up on stuff. So that is my summary. <laughs>